this thing don't like us poking around in his old stuff, you know? I mean, usually, I gotta get a permit from him just to open this floor up. They say a guy got lost in here back in 37. Just disappeared when they was loading some stuff in. We don't want to find him, huh? <laughs> Only thing I want to know is what on this floor is pulling all that juice. We got a contract, you know? It says we don't mess around with anything. That contract was made when energy was cheap, Gomez. You got a big conservation problem here. You hear something? Come on, Gomez. I'm going to turn one point. What was that? I don't know. I don't know. We should have called the estate. Frozen solid. A regular ratsicle. What do you suppose it is? You know, a refrigerator of some kind. Oh, <laughs> 
Did you guys monitor his vitals? Couldn't get near him. He froze every instrument we had. Contact temperature transference. I haven't seen that in a while. Okay, come on, let's get him inside. Come on. Okay, the scanner's working, right? No problem, Joey. If mom could put somebody on. Okay, this is great. We have to walk the top. Why the trick to God came out? Nobody ever works around here. <laughs> His name's Arnold Beefneater. Beefneater? Beefneater. Born in Kansas City in 1900, no living relatives. Guy barely looks 40. Cryogenics, Billy. That machine throws a poor boy like a pork chop. Donna, speaking of which, you're going to let me know about dinner tonight, right? The machine was built for Howard Hubert in 1935. The billionaire intended to use it for himself, but they were unable to get the apparatus to work. Until Beefeater here tried it out at Stevens. Am I supposed to read that as a no? Okay, let's get him up on the table and nobody touch him with their hands, all right? I'll go to lunch in a couple of minutes, Dr. Hayes. Do you have some messages? All right, let me have the insulation blanket. That tray, all right, give me a clamp. Body temperature is up to 27 degrees and still rising. Right, how long has he been out of the deep freeze? About two hours, and he was weak when we found him. Cardiovascular is failing. Mrs. Jimmel Kranz from Kenosha, Wisconsin called. Her son Randy's been breathing fire, and she's scared about losing the house. All right, someone hit the power switch on this scanner. Look, you know, I really don't think it's fair to judge me by just one day, you know. Body temperature is rising up to 28 degrees. Okay, so uh, Hamburger Haven isn't uh, Chez Francois, and is it my fault that Francois lost the reservations? I don't think so, no. So, will someone hit the juice on this, please? Mr. Miller, the invisible man, called again. He said he's been in to see you six times, but you treat him like he's not even here. We're losing him. I'm getting ventricular fibrillation. He's right. I said hit the juice. Where are we supposed to get this fixed last week? Budget cuts. Body temperature is up to 29 degrees. Oh, and your mother called from her beauty salon. He's arresting. No, he's not. He's melting. It's a walking popsicle. Open the freezer. Whoa. Donna, empty it out. Take off the shelf. Come on. Yeah, anything you say. <laughs> the blanket off. We're going to tip it into the grease. Let's move the gurney up. Right there. Okay, lock off your wheel. All right, on my count, on three, we'll do it. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Lock the door. Watch the wires. Lock the door. 28 degrees. 27. CV stabilizing. All right, Miss Nance, where was my mother calling from? Where'd she go? Lunch. Lunch. To like my car. I really do. No, I do. I, yes, dented fenders or no dented fenders. I, well, I happen to think a 65 Dart has, it has, it has, it has charm. Yeah. No, no, I can't, no, I can't afford another car, but that doesn't mean, no, mom, 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 will you stop and listen to me? Will you stop, will you stop and listen to me? Will you listen? I don't care what Jimmy Havenstock drives, Mom. I really don't. Dr. Havenstock, okay? Well, I'm a doctor too, Mom. I am. Look, I gotta go now, Mom. Okay, I do. I love you, I, but I, I've gotta get going. Else we're doing some things here, okay? I love you. Say hello to Dad. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye. She was talking to the people in the beauty salon and wanted to know why her son wasn't a yuppie. Hey, uh, we got some problems here. Yeah, a man with a gift for understatement. I mean, this is important stuff here. I mean, beef, uh, beef here could be a new breakthrough. Uh... I mean, how we treat it? No funding, broken equipment, and a salary that could make a paper boy cry. Exactly. Look, 
The problem here is results. Plain and simple. Strickland wants results. Got that? Okay. Results? Wants results? Okay. All right, look. I'll show you results. What? All right, how about this? How about my elastic skin, okay? Great. Or how about your glandular research over here, huh? I mean, look at this. Big bunny. Little bunny. I mean, look. I mean, come on. This isn't progress? Billy, it isn't human. Look. When Mom Chris was running this place, things were different, okay? He's a man of science. He understands bunnies. But this guy, Strickland, he's all business, okay? He wants stuff that's commercial. Stuff that turns a profit. Stuff that has to do with war, right? No, Al, well, that's it. I mean, what does he think we do around here anyway, huh? Strickland wants war. He's gonna get it. Please understand, Dr. Strickland, General Teal. You are asking Congress to approve the construction of the most destructive weapon in the world. You betcha. You can see what this baby can do. Um, the neutron beam will have enormous destructive potential, but it will also be the cleanest weapon in our arsenal, Senator. No radiation, no fallout. Which makes it doubly dangerous. It's a weapon that could be tempting to use. Washington is expecting an enormous amount of protest worldwide, and we need a guarantee that if this um, neutron beam is constructed, that you and the military are going to have a responsible and safe place to keep it. We already do, Senator. The NB bunker is located at a secret site about three hours from here. Now, the only way into the chamber in which the beam will be stored is through a defense corridor which is virtually impassable. And the Pentagon is ready to throw everything it's got against that defense system to prove it. Excuse me, uh, I think that before we go any further, we should inform the senators of the dangers we've encountered in the computer simulations. Dr. Momquist. Gentlemen, my distinguished predecessor is a scientist of great precaution. Now, the computers indicate that there are some bugs in the beam that still need to be worked out. But that's the way it always is with these kind of breakthroughs. Hell, everything starts out with bugs in the military. You boys know that? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Big guns. Hey, Dr. S. Dr. Malmquist. Billy. Uh, Dr. Hayes, I'm a little busy just now. Right. Um, you're a little busy right now. I'll just come back later and we can talk about it alone. Fine, Dr. Hayes. I mean, we don't want to let these guys in on it yet, right? Let us in on what, Doctor? Nothing, nothing. Um, you see, General, over at the human investigation team, our lips are sealed. I mean, when the boss says a project is secret, that's... Secret project? Really nothing. It's just one of the, uh, one of the little things that we're working on with a lot of commercial potential. The kind of stuff that can turn a, a big, big profit. We're talking war here, General. Hayes, if you don't get out that door... Let him talk, Strickland. Forgive me, Dr. Monquist, but it's time to do a little groveling. General, imagine, if you will, an army of soldiers that can actually see in the dark. We're working on it. Imagine fighting men who can grow to be 10 feet tall. Huh? We're working on that too. Gentlemen, try to picture, if you can, Navy frogmen that can actually breathe underwater. I mean, infantry that can run 30 miles an hour. I mean, think about jet pilots whose reflexes are as fast as that of a computer's. Where's this technology coming from, huh? I mean, who's working on these things, right? Well, we are at HIT. And at HIT, we do more of it than anyone else in the world. Pretty good. Dr. Hayes, hit, hit the fan. Oh, easy, easy, Dr. Hayes. Okay, no one's gonna hurt you, pal. Okay, nice and easy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, be, be cool. Oh. Holy scanner. Whoa, 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 Holy, where'd everybody go? Amelia! 
There were some calls while you were out. What's going on down here? It's freezing. Oh, no. He broke the door wide open. The cold seems to recharge his strength. Amelia! He keeps calling for uh, Amelia. First calls from a man who says he sprouts fish scales every time he goes swimming. Who is he? He didn't leave his name. He's a cryogenic guy we got this morning. He freezes everything he touches. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What year was he frozen? 37, uh, July. Amelia! Earhart. <laughs> What? That was the year Amelia Earhart disappeared. Maybe that's the only thing he remembers. Your landlord called at 215 to say your check bounced. My bunnies. Oh. Hey, Beef. Okay, back off, Beef Meter. Okay, these bunnies are mine. Hell, get out of there, man. He'll freeze you. Beef Meter. Listen to me. Amelia! Watch out. Look. See the door? Look at the door. See the generals? Okay, they're trying to find Amelia. I mean, and they're trying really hard. And if anyone's going to find them, it's them. They'll find her, Beef. Okay, trust me on this. What do you think, y'all? Maybe, maybe just one little bunny, huh? No! A, a frozen candy bar, huh, hubby? was one whale of a display of destruction. <laughs> you say he was cryogenically frozen? We like to think of him as a giant popsicle, you know, two, three hours of normal temperature and he melts. You want to recharge him, you just uh, throw him back in the fridge. And he can freeze anything he touches? We call it contact temperature transference, CTT. <laughs> Military applications are tremendous. Imagine freezing an enemy harbor. What the hey? The whole Black Sea. Huh. Wait a minute here, General. Dr. S, you don't seem to understand something here, okay? I mean, this temperature transference thing, it really takes a lot out of the big guy, you know? I mean, you have him freeze a whole harbor or even a small lake or something, and you could drive his body temperature up enough to send him to the big icebox in the sky, you know? Yeah. You let us worry about that, Hayes. Take him to the level one lab in the military bunker. Hey, wait. Hey, wait a minute, Dr. S. You're not serious, are you? I mean... He's our baby. You can't get him to the military division. Do Dr. Mom. He and Elle are more experienced. I'm not interested in their experience, Mom Quist. Something in this program finally stands a chance to make a profit. You should feel good about and it. And we do. We do. It's just it, me and my gang... I don't have the facility. Exactly, boss. Just think what we could do with a new building, more equipment, pay vacations, maybe a little more funding. Funding? You don't think we're going to put more money into this program, do you? I know. It probably sounds a little crazy, I know. Yes, it does. And now that I've seen this operation down here, I think we should quit while we're ahead. What are you trying to say here, boss? Termination, Hayes. You, Wilt the Stilt, this entire flaky program are out the door. We're dead meat, you know. I mean, once Humanodyne gives you the boot, it's adios time. I mean, we're gone. There's not another research join the country that's going to take us. Some leader I turned out to be, huh? Hey, Stretch got a game of full court over here. Could use a good sign. Hey, uh, thanks, but no, man. I'm giving a few pointers to my little brother here. Hey, no, no, man. You got to anticipate. Come on, Billy. Loosen up. Anticipate. Come on, Billy. Check you next time. Sure. Billy, can we get out of here? Not till you take some shots, y'all. 
No, man, I'm not taking no shots. Listen, my friend, let me explain a little something to you, okay? Um, I've got ten uniforms just like the one I'm wearing sitting on a shelf at home now. And that's ten uniforms at $15.95 a pop, sitting on a shelf waiting from seven foot four star center to learn to play ball. Shoot, Stretch. Come on, Bill, you promised you wouldn't make me. For your own good, bud, listen. Your life as a scientist is over, okay? I mean, it's gone. Kiss you goodbye. Listen, face it. The only shot you got left now is the NBA. Okay, now... All right, now, listen up, listen up, okay? Take your shot. You can do it. Just... You got it. Loose, loose. Take your shot. There you go, there you go. There we go. Okay, uh, NBA's out. Uh, look, maybe take us back if I got down on my hands and knees and, like, licked his legions or something. I mean, Strickland's into humiliation, isn't he? I, excuse me, would you happen to be seeking representation of any Billy. type? Billy. Uh, Billy. Huh, what? I think I got something that'll get us back in. Look, it's not worth doing anything kinky, okay? I'm telling you. I'm serious. So am I. Look, you know that glandular serum I gave the little bunnies? Yeah, that's shrinking stuff, right? Yeah. Well, I gave a large dose of that to something else. Wait, you kidding? You gave yourself a dose of that poison? Billy, you gotta understand. Understand, Hal, you just started preliminary testing on the bunnies. How would you feel? Growing up in Watts, seven foot four, and not being able to play basketball? Do you have any idea of the humiliation? Humiliation? Al, you're a scientist, man. I'm a scientist because I hate being tall. Why do you think I spend all my free time on growth research? I want to be able to buy my clothes in normal people shops. Uh, drive a car without kinking my neck. Sleep in a bed with my feet in it. I want to be able to go out on a basketball court without feeling so much pressure. I wanted to get little, Billy. I took the serum to get little. How little? That's little. Hey, Al, where are you? Are you in there? Hi. Billy, there are some clothes in my pocket. Do you think you could... What are you kidding? You got clothes? You don't expect me to run around naked, do you? Thanks. Ken's jogging suit, Al. What do you want? Giorgio, Armani? Come on, come on, give him to me. They always wore into designer labels. Weird. So, uh, Ellie, answer a question for sure. me. Sure. Sure what? Look, how long do you stay like that? It takes about 14 minutes for the, uh, hormone to wear off. Well, what, you, you, you press the stuff into your system when you, when you hit the back of your head? Something like that. We call it a neurological reflex. I can only do it once an hour. This is incredible, Al. Think what this could mean to medical science. Think what this could mean to an army. Well, what do you say? Do you think the committee bought it? <laughs> Does the army buy $700 screwdrivers? They swallowed it hook, line, and sinker.
sure beat skinny dipping on a hot summer day. What a thrill! If those suits in Washington could see this. They'd throw you in jail so fast they'd make your head spin. How did you get it in your mom, Quist? In building this weapon, you violated every AEC statute, every nuclear arms regulation. On the face of the earth, Doctor. That's the difference between you and me. Congress drags its heels. By the time they approve this thing, we'll all be dead and buried. The general wants to buy the weapon. I want to sell it to him. That's how business gets done. The beam sets up a chain reaction we can't control. The computer simulations... We're only computer simulations. I just saw an island disappear. Next time it could be the entire ocean. It is dangerous. <laughs> the atomic bomb is dangerous, Doctor. Is that any reason to get rid of it? Hmm? I'm sorry, Dr. Strickland. He just slipped by. Take him to the lab in the military division. Oh, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is dangerous. It's dangerous. It can finish the world. I think we just found someone to test with the Iceman. You know what they do to you, don't you? The same thing they're doing to Beef Neater. Exactly. We're talking inhumane here. Why do you think we never showed him Mr. Electricity? Johnny Bukowski? Yeah, and that, that uh, telekinetic girl, the one with the um, nice... Probation you know. officer. You couldn't keep your hands off okay. of her. All right, look. So the kid was a delinquent, and she had a probation officer. That was cute. My point is that it's always been our policy to protect weird people from the warmongers, right? So now that you're weird, why should we change our policy? Because it's the only way we can get our jobs back. <laughs> Whoa, big fella. You don't think there's anyone else interested in tiny people? I mean, uh, think of the business applications you got here. Okay, I mean, you got your, uh, you got your hotels, your hospitals, you got your airlines, you got, uh, you got the Disneyland. And you don't think the government's gonna buy them out? Look, if I work for anybody, me and my work is gonna end up top secret and in the army. Dinner. You know what's really depressing? Hey, these Billy Burgers are not too rare. What's really depressing is that from now on, weird people got no place to go. We were it, Billy. We were it. The Joint Chiefs of Staff hey. met today with Humanidine officials to discuss the construction of what's believed to be a breakthrough in nuclear arms. The neutron beam is portable, clean, and has no residual radiation. But I want to emphasize that Congress will not authorize the construction or the testing of this weapon until the safety and the security of the weapon's storage site have been approved. Neutron beam, are they serious? Dr. Momquist said it was so dangerous they'd never build it. Lost the big enchilada twice in computer simulations. Big enchilada, what, what Los Angeles? The world. Whoa. Wonder where Dr. Mom was during this. those for you? I... No? Nice bikes. K I and K hotline topics. Favorite fetishes, you're on the air. Billy. Dr. Mom. You sound horrible. Where are you? Neutron. Neutron beam. <laughs> yeah, neutron beam. We saw it. What's going on, Doc? Strickland. Strickland what? Where are you? Military lab with the with with the the beef beef. Doctor Mom. <gasps> 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 
Check him up. This is a scheme, Billy. You're getting me into another one of your schemes. It's not a scheme, Al. This is a rescue operation. We gotta move fast, because Dr. Mom did not sound good. You know, the thing to do here is just to pick up the phone and call the police. Al, Strickland eats senators for breakfast. You don't think he can handle the police? You don't think he can handle us? Yes, you and me, yes. The population of Santa Monica, California, maybe. But we're talking weird here, Al. What we're talking here is weird. Why are we parking down here? Billy. You did call him. I told you I called him, okay? What would he say? He said, uh, you know, that he would talk. He said we'd talk. Right. Sort of. Sort of? What's sort of, Billy? <laughs> Will you relax? He said he'd see us, okay? He said he'd see us. Yeah. In a matter of speaking. Are you listening to yourself? Do you realize what you're saying? Because he hated your guts when he left the lab. I can only take so much Chuck Berry, okay, Al? I mean, he was pushing me to the limit. Yeah, but did you have to terrorize him with the water gun? That was a joke. That was a joke, Al. Look, you're blowing this way out of proportion, believe me. The water could have electrocuted him, so forgive me if I'm a little skeptical that he's going to welcome us with open arms. No, no, see, that's, that's not what I, that's not what he said. What did he say, Billy? Well, he... Well, he said that if he ever saw us again, that, uh, he'd blow our heads off. <clears throat> okay, hey. Hey, B-Man, that was a heck of a welcoming shot there. You're, you're aiming to prove me, Phil. L listen, uh, John, you gotta be pretty tapped out after a blast like that. Um, why don't you come on out and we'll talk. Hey, B-Man, you looking great. Does he look great or what? Huh? Great. Listen, Johnny, you know, I, I know the, the last time that we saw each other, we left a couple things unsettled. And... Okay, look, I apologize for the squirt, Eddie. It wasn't funny. Okay, I admit that. But B-Man, I mean, 46 straight hours of, of See the Bees. It's a little intense. Does you, Johnny, can you just lower your arms so we can talk? I just want to talk to you a minute, okay? Look, I even brought you a peace offering. It's, like, it's, uh, it's Chuck's greatest hits. Is that cool or what? I already have it. Wow. That's incredible. You shot off two bolts and you can still move that fast? Yeah, it's gotten worse. I'm pretty tapped right now, but just from the static in the air, I'll have a full charge in a couple of hours. So what do you want, Hayes? I'm busy. I want to make you a hero, Johnny. Huh? Not interested. What do you mean, not interested? I mean, we're talking network news here, uh, household names. Try to snow me. What, does uh, Humanidine need some new kind of secret weapon? No, we don't even work for them anymore. He's telling the truth, Johnny B. We just got fired. Oh, so you need me for a freak show. Or maybe the Department of Water and Power needs a little more juice. That's not it. Look, I don't care. This place is all I need or want. No thunderstorms, very little water, and a, enough health and welfare from the Musicians Guild to buy me groceries. I'm happy, all right? And alone? I got fried by 20,000 volts on my last rock concert, don't you remember? I attract electricity now. Lights dim when I walk into a room. My fingers spark. My eyes glow. I'm a freak, huh? Do either of you know how that feels? No, no, no. This dude's a regular guy. Can help us 
spring, Dr. Mom? Her name's Gloria Vanallo. She's 17 years old and telekinetic as all get out. No one knows who her father is, but her mother says he's from outer space, but she's locked up in a mental ward in Camarillo. What's wrong with my car? Your generator lights on. Generator lights? I just put a brand new battery in last week. What? What's sucking all the juice here? Are they glowing? Regular sparklers. You sound funny, too. Look, I don't think we ought to risk uh, taking Mr. Fourth of July inside, you know? Why don't you guys uh, stay here and see if you can recharge my battery, okay? Maybe you can figure out which hand's positive. Whoa! You wouldn't pick on a guy that's normal. She's as normal as we're allowing her to be. And you call what she did in that shopping mall normal? Some girls dumped a bottle of perfume on her head. They tease her. And that's a normal response? It sure as hell isn't criminal. Look, Scanlon. All I know is that if you lock that kid up, everything I've done for her in the last three years is going to be wasted. And I think that's the last thing any of us wants to see, huh? Dr. Hayes. Hey, Mr. Scanlon, how you doing? Bob. Bob, Bob, of course. I, um, I knew that. <laughs> and of course, you know, our glorious probation officer, Miss Miller. Jane, Jane, Jane. Get it, Hayes. Jane, after everything we've been through, I... Uh, excuse me, Doctor, but uh, this visit wouldn't have anything to do with Gloria, would it? Bob, you read my mind. Here's our standard 30,000-mile checkup. We give it to everyone we've tested. Not with Gloria or not. I want her to feel like a human being, not like some sort of a freak. More tests that you man it up. It helped her last time, didn't it? This time it may set her back. For three years? Miss Miller, isn't that a lot better than keeping her in here? Hey, Glow. What's the skinny, babe? We're using temperature extremes on him to test his limits. Just make sure you don't kill him. Looks like you're getting pretty close with Momquist. You boys figure out who he tried to call yesterday? It doesn't matter. He was too drugged to talk. What are you, crazy? Where is your mind? Under this ice pack, screaming in pain, haven't you taught that girl any manners? Hayes, this is a violation of her probation. If Scanlon finds out, she's in jail and I'm out of a job. She'd be in jail right this second if we hadn't come along. All right. All right. I can't fight you on that one. Billy, look. She's 17 years old. She's a baby and what you're asking her to do is dangerous and I'm just worried, that's all. Jane, this is Billy talking now. Look, I know what we're asking is a lot here. But you've got to try to think of what an experience like this could do to help Gloria, too. Help her to use her powers constructively. To build her confidence, her self, her self-esteem. To show her that being weird is, is special. That weird is okay. Gloria, when did Hayes and Lincoln do their research number on you? Why am I done? I think it just answered the question, but I wouldn't put money on it. A year and a half ago. Ah, she could talk. Terrific. Now, I'm going to talk back to you, and if we can keep this going, we'll have a real conversation, okay? A year and a half ago, huh? Yeah, they worked on me two years ago last July. I know. You know? You want to tell me how? I was at the concert when it happened. Jane took me there to see you. To see me? You're kidding, right? I like listening to your music. Still do. Actually, have one of our albums? All three. Ah, collector. Yes, so. Are you ever gonna make another one? No. After 
after the accident, I, uh... I don't play much anymore. the water. Water did that? Yeah. Did you do that? You really are a delinquent. When do you want to do it, Hayes? Okay, gang, ready? Let's run it down. Check. Temperature monitoring. Check. Yeah, we got it. Okay, frozen candy bars? Uh, check. You're not supposed to eat them, B-Man. I'm hungry. Hey, Toby. How you doing? We're running a nice special on the bingo bombs tonight. Does this have something to do with another one of your experiments? No. Just like the tunes. Oh, well, I heard they closed your division down. <laughs> Somebody better tell me, huh? <laughs> See you later. Oh, hey, Toby. Listen, what's the deal here? Are they, uh, are they serious about all that shoot on sight stuff at the military complex? <laughs> are you serious? Man, set foot near that place at night, buddy. You'll be shaking hands with the undertaker. Is that right? Okay, just, uh, just curious. Evening. This area is off limits at night, sir. What? Well, not for the company basketball team. Oh, didn't anyone tell you guys? Well, we're having our first team meeting in the conference room in the military complex, uh, level one. By the way, we're looking for a good forward if you got the right moves. <laughs> I'm going to need to see some ID. Sure, I, ID these. I got to see some ID. <laughs> okay, um, listen, what do you think about a... Uh, Will a Tina Turner fan club card do? I guess not. <laughs> nice work, Club. Hayes, I feel ridiculous wearing this thing. I mean, just because you had them lying around. We're a team, B-Man. The uniforms, they help us think like a team. Besides, I had them lying around. There is a huge groundswell, both in this country and abroad, that opposes this weapon. <laughs> Where the Ruskies are shaking in their boots. Seems everyone has general. Now, where? Uh, <laughs> you know, and I know, that we, we don't actually use nuclear weapons. What we do is we stockpile them. Uh, at least, that's the theory here. Isn't it? Of course it is. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> now, if we're going to sell this theory to the people, what we've got to do is we've got to show that this stockpile, this, this bunker where you're going to actually keep this thing is secure. You see, that's, that's your basic PR there. Okay, all right. Okay, you guys ready? You know, I was hoping for a little bit more enthusiasm here, okay? Because I'm pretty darn excited about this plan, okay? Because we, we're ready, we're a team, and we're organized. And we've covered all the bases. It's locked. It's locked. That's okay. That's okay. We'll blast through it. That's going to set the alarm off, Billy. We'll just move that much faster. Beeman, you got any juice? Is Springsteen the boss? Okay. Look, 
Just try to keep the thunder down, okay, babe? Okay, everybody get back. with the thunder. Let's go. Jane, get beef stuck. Oh, no. What's wrong? The heat from the door meltdown set off the sprinklers. So? So I walk in there and I'm a french fry. That's right. It'll completely short out a system. So how do we get in the lab? We'll improvise. Come on, let's go. Improvise. Uh, Johnny B, pull the truck into the lobby. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. It'll be okay. Gloria! Go on. Come on, come on. Senator Donner, we understand your concerns, and I can assure you that the name Humanidine and the word security are synonymous. Yes. What? Uh. Something wrong, Gucker? There's just been a break-in in the military division. Hello? Great idea. Well, got a minute? Keep him breaking the We'll be right back. Is that him? Yeah. What's he wearing? We call it a refrigeration suit. It's going to make our job a whole lot easier. Billy. Yeah. Let's talk to your mom. There's a door button inside. Yeah? So who's going to push it? I am. I told you about that, right? Yeah, I told you. This is just what we needed. How the deuce did they get in? The MPs who met them are pretty shaken up, sir. I mean, they're talking lightning bolts and guns and clocks. They get a description of the aggressor. Yes, sir. And? Three men, one woman, and a teenage girl in an ice cream truck. A what? Are you? And with heights are no problem as long as you don't think about it. All right, take it and be careful. Whoa. All right, let me the arm. Okay. Oh. Oh. Just jump right off there, Al. Jump? What are you, crazy? Jump. No, no, no jumping. J Jane, you're going to lower me down slowly. Got that? Go, L, jump, will you? Okay. Okay, I'm going. Okay, hold on. Okay, that's good. Be real easy now. Okay, there you go. You got it, just a little lower now. That's it. All the things I let you talk me into. You see, you're doing fine now. Come. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right, a little bit more. All right, swing, just swing. Swings. Come on, just like in grade school now. Got it. For the benefit of man and science. Yeah. Oh. Forget round ball, man. You got a career as a trapeze artist. All right, you got it? Yeah, got it. Hey, Bill, buddy, come on, get this thing off, man. I'm untying him. I'm untying Relax. Jay, check out Dr. Malkin. Get him off the floor. Tell you if you can get him to talk. What kind of military detachment you boys got here? A full company, sir. Well, I'll bring him on out and surround the place. Dr. Mom, quit. Uh, Yo, Dr. Mom, can you hear me? Dr. Mom, it's Lincoln. It's L. Yo, hello, over here? 
painkiller. What are they doing to you? What's happened? No trial beam. They built it. it it's real. The new trial beam is real. Save it, Elf. Save the world. Dr. Mom! Dr. Mom! The front gate says the truck was driven in by Dr. Hayes and Dr. Lincoln. What do you suppose they're after? Beef eater and his mom Chris. Why are they not getting out of here alive? Hey, El man, what? What's the matter with him? He was dead. He took one look at me and he fainted. Bad news, Billy. The neutron beam, it's real. Strickland's hiding it in the desert bunker. And Dr. Malin found out about it. And... Listen to this. If we don't get out of here, they're going to do the same thing to us. Say hello to my sweatshirt, man. Oh, 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 oh. feels so good. Jane, you drive Dr. Mom, I'll take Beef. Okay. Oh. But get out the Snickers. The Snickers? You forgot the Snickers? Go, 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 come on, let's go. Oh, great. Someday you'll be a man. You'll be the leader of a rock and roll band. Many people coming from miles around to hear you play music till the sun goes down. Maybe someday your name will be in lights. I saying Johnny be good, gonna play tonight. Stretch a little bit. We'll go walk out to the truck. Beep. This way. No, no, no. No, no. Beep. This way. Here, there you go. You can go into the truck. Amelia! Who's Amelia? You are. Huh? Here she is, Beep. I brought her here for you. For him, what are you doing, Hayes? Lead him out to the truck, okay? Look, you forgot the candy bars, you play along, okay? Hey, well, we found her for you, Beef. It's Amelia. It's Amelia, Beef. Amelia? That's it. That's it. The guy just waved him. Waved him. Hi. Amelia is going out to the truck now. Why don't you come along? She said, uh, you guys can talk. And you have a great time, so just keep... Wave, wave, Amelia. Johnny? Johnny! Whoa, this is serious. Beam 
man, you kidding? Get in the truck! What are you doing, man? Come on! I'm giving the crew cuts a concert! Come on, come on, let's get out of here! Come on! Look, Pete, Amelia's got a candy bar for you, but if you want it, you gotta get in the truck, okay? Oh, keep coming. Come and get it, Beef, it's in the freezer! Coming out. Jingle, it's right here. Give that truck a couple of mortars. Artillery, we need a mortar at the door. Great. We're out of here. Ace, what happens when he wakes up? You'll think of something. I'm like this guy! Hey! Oh, boy. Where's Al? Sorry, bud. Oh, my. Well... It's about time. Don't you ever do that to me again. Now, where are my clothes? Your clothes? Let's bolt. my clothes. Sorry, okay? And it's locking the road, Ace. I am not getting out of this truck naked. Jango, get in the back. Yeah. Wait a minute, you got enough for another blast? Saving tomorrow. New York, Moscow, and London, of what has become the largest spontaneous protest against a new military weapon. The neutron beam has yet to be built, but the first step toward its construction will take place if its California storage bunker passes security testing today. Correspondent Cindy Sonnet is there now. The Riverside Mesa that will house the neutron beam is currently under assault as it has been all morning. So far, the Army Green Berets, the Special Squadron of the Air Force, and the Navy SEALs have been unable to make it past the bunker's secret water barrier. And from the looks of the reinforcements going in now, the Marines are having the same kind of luck. Senator Donner. Well, <clears throat> obviously we're impressed. Frankly, uh... This morning, I had my doubts. I think you're referring to our other top news story today, which was the break-in of the high-security military complex at Humanidine last night, done by a group of subversives called the Misfits of Science. Uh, well, it was a bit of a, uh, how shall I say this, uh, a shock. Yes, yeah, a shock to see five people in basketball uniforms get past all that manpower. <laughs> Looks like they use this freezer unit for target practice. No way it's going to work now. How much further to the desert bunker? About five miles up the next dirt road. I feel ridiculous in this. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, Billy better find something. Johnny, oh, where did I, Jane and Glow go? Uh, I went to the ladies' room. I told them we'd keep an eye on, uh... Oh, no. basketball uniforms proclaiming themselves to be the misfits of science. Where the name comes You're going to eat the whole box? But an unnamed the chocolate attack. Of the Pentagon believes that the misfits of science pink and black uniform is tied directly to the rose red and black colors of the dreaded Black September organization. The source is quoted as saying that... These are uh, extra, extra large. 
These are real small. Don't think you're going to get into them. Gifts. Political leanings. Range from Friends. the scouts to the DAR. The members of the group are believed to be led by a Dr. William Hayes. Formerly head of Humanidine's human investigation team, Hayes is believed to have ties to subversive organizations. A spokesman for the FBI reports that Hayes was known for his unconventional behavior at medical school. 6872. Rumored to have taken numerous off island boating expeditions. Keep the change, Hayes. Hayes is thought to have taken part in terrorism and subversive training in his very time. Speculation that the misfits of science are backed in part by Castro is apparently running rampant in Washington, fueled by a photograph of Hayes in Fort Lauderdale last April. No shoes, but the rest of the stuff should fit okay. Great. They're calling us a subversive organization now. I'm serious. They're calling me a subversive. Do you have any idea what this is going to do to my mother? In addition to Dr. William Hayes, oh, other members of the group include oh, Dr. Telford Momquist, to Dr. Elvis hey, Lincoln. Hey, that's stretch. I know that guy. And a convicted juvenile delinquent. No, sir. Believe me, I had no idea. If you have any idea of their whereabouts, call the FBI at area code 213-555-2147. We repeat that number, area code... Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our lives. You realize this is crazy, Hayes. I think we can drive on the guarded property and break into a bunker that the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force haven't been able to get into. Exactly. Exactly. Because if we don't do it now with the press out there to see it, I mean, it's not going to get done. Well, I've been listening to the radio, and the Marines don't even look like they can get in. Of course not. I helped design the bunker. Normal people and machines can never break through. Do you think Strickland would risk all these tests if he thought they could? But all of you, with Mr. Beefneater here... How's he holding up? Just under 20. Amelia? Well, you guys said 32 degrees was fatal. All right, look. I know we're taking chances here, okay? But the way I see it, it's the only way we're going to get out of this mess. Billy's right. If we can get in there and expose the neutron beam to the press, to the world, then we might be doing a big favor for everyone. Right. Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute here, what, are you guys kidding, what are these, what are these wussy looks I'm seeing here, huh? You guys got through an army last night, don't you realize what you've done? No, I guess not. Okay, let me tell you something about last night, okay? Last night, I, last night I felt better about myself, about what I do, than I have in the past five years of my life. I mean that. Now, if you guys want to go around thinking of yourselves as like a bunch of weird losers or something, that's okay with me. I don't, I don't care. That's fine. But when I see you, when I see you guys, I see something different. I see a team. I see a team that I know can make a difference in the world today. Now, you misfits ready to kick a little bunny around here or what? I follow this man to the ends of the earth. Thank you. Well, at least till the end of the day. <laughs> Jane? Yeah? It'll be okay if I board your lipstick. Sure. Thank you. You really meant that, didn't you? The part about this being the most worthwhile thing? Jane. All my life I've been a goof. 
you know, coming up with screwy ideas, leading people to do really dumb things. But I gotta tell you, last night, I, I did okay. You know, I, I was okay. Am I getting a little mushy here? You know, you should have called me, Hayes. I tried to. No, I did. I really did. I got your machine, you know. If your first name starts with B and your last name starts with H, I... I know you can take your romantic evenings and, uh... I got the message. I got the message. Maybe you give up too easily. No. I was a jerk. I figured I deserved it. You were a jerk. And you did. We interrupt the music for a KLCA news break. That Marines may have succeeded at Iwo Jima, but they have failed to breach the security at the military test site. Hey, yo, we got a roll! The Marines are starting to emerge from the bunker right now, looking tired and beaten. And as you can see behind me, the people from the Pentagon and Humanidine are just delighted. But Tom, I suspect the reaction that you're getting back in New York is something different. Right you are, Cindy. The reaction from around the world is not a good one. People are despondently wondering just who will be able to save them from the construction of this new and deadly weapon. Who will be their savior? What's the temp? 24 and rising. Amelia! I've been riding the back with Beef. Hey, B-Man, glow! Johnny B, I think they're calling us. Pretty quiet up here. It's dry. Things don't go too well without water. That's what I was thinking. Maybe I found something that makes me want to give up dry land. Well, come out and be with you till you make up your mind. I graduate next year, and as long as I check in with Jane every couple of weeks. Uh, no, Gloria, that's not. No, I'll be 18. I don't mind the desert. I think it's safer for me out here, really. No. Look, you're a terrific girl. I mean it. But what I didn't mean for you to think was... You, you kissed me last night. Yeah, I kissed Jane, too. I mean, I even kissed Billy. We were happy. We were celebrating. We we're a team. We're like a family. It's just like at school, isn't it? They all pretended they're my friends. That they like me. Hey, Glow, like your hair. Love the way you tore up them all. I do like you. You're like a sister to me. I don't want to be a sister. You lied to me. You did just what they all do. I didn't lie. Go ahead, laugh at me now. That's what they all do. No, Gloria. Laugh! Gloria! Gloria! Oh, no. No, no way! Well, Mom, we can't no, 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 no. I'd only slow you down. Now, here I might be able to do some good. Well, go on. You get out of here. Go on. Who is Jane? She's in the back with Beef. Hey, you. Where's Johnny Beef? Come on, Johnny Beef, let's go. Now's the time to pick that girl trouble. Hit it, Hayes. <laughs> Shocks? 
Oh, step on it. I can't find the turn off. Move to the fence. is asking, Senator, is do we really need another kind of nuclear weapon? Uh, let me answer that, if I may. Now, this country was founded on its strength and its ability to keep ahead of the world. Now, all I have to say to those people who don't wish to keep ahead is tough noogies. Now, as long as we have a safe place to keep this weapon and... Well, what's the problem? The who? We have word that it's the Misfits. Again, that's the group that broke into Humana died last night. I'm repeating, it appears the misfits of science. It oh. looks like they're ice cream oh, Sure. Apparently, yes, I can see them now. There are two highway patrol cars that are pursuing the truck, and it appears to be heading for the entrance to the bunker. This is McDonald Carey, and these are the days of our lives. Let's go. Johnny B. bolt shot right out of his arm. I want that chopper on top of that mesa with a full platoon inside. Why the helicopter? They'll never get past the water. Well, they might. And then that neutron beam is going to rise up that elevator and pop out of the top like a bare platoon in broad daylight. I paid for that weapon, Strickland. And I'm telling you, it's going to be mine. Jane, how bad is it between them? That bad, huh? Come on, let's go, hurry! He's slowing down. Gloria, come here. We're all slowing down. What's the temp? Uh, 25 degrees and climbing. as big as Dr. Mom said it Dr. was. Dr. Mom has been known to exaggerate, okay? Offhand, I'd say that's not an exaggeration. All right, man. Let's go. You're all right, so it's a big door. We all see that. I think we accept that. The door is it's really big. But how do we know it's really behind the door? And I think... I think that's the question. You know, I mean, this water obstacle thing, it could be nothing. Maybe it could be like a, a little pond, a hot tub or something, you know? What's the point of injecting something negative into this thing if we don't really have to? And Dr. Mom said, and Dr. Mom, I mean, he designed this thing, you know? Now, if Dr. Mom says that beef can handle it, then I'm sure it's okay. Hey, come on, what's the matter? On the other hand, Dr. Mom could be a bald-faced liar. Now they are the hope of the world. The misfits of science, whether they be subversives or merely disgruntled employees, are apparently all that stands between mankind and the construction of the neutron beam. The Pope has blessed them, the people have cheered them. And now, as you're seeing in these live pictures, all the world can do is wait. Cindy? And wait is all we can do, Tom. It's been some 66 minutes since the misfits and the army entered the Mesa. And we've had word that there's some kind of a Mexican standoff going on in there. Ace, Lincoln, standing around down here for another hour isn't going to do anyone any good. <laughs> you know, I don't think any of you really want to face that washing machine behind you. And even if you do get through there to the button, I've got a chopper standing by the top of this mesa to scoop up that beam before anyone can see it. So why don't you save yourself some pain and heartache 
by giving yourselves up, huh? Who knows? <laughs> we might even be able to work out something where you can work off your time in the army. It doesn't look like we have much of a choice. Yeah. Thanks, General! That was not my choice. We're coming in, Hayes! Go. That's it, Hayes. Four in the last 30 minutes. I'm tapped. What's he reading now? 27 degrees. Don't even think about it, Billy. If Beef tries to freeze all that water, he's a dead man. Yeah, I know he can't. I don't think you or any of your freaks have anything left, Dr. Hayes. So I'm gonna give you 30 seconds before I send these men in again. Freaks. Guess maybe he's right, huh? No, oh, Gloria. Come on. We're all rejects. It's this family thing, one for all and all for one. I mean, who are we trying to kid? Trying to kid anyone. You guys were just out to get your jobs back. Jane wanted to see you and keep me out of jail. Johnny B, Mr. Rock and Roll. You were just out to prove how cool you are. You're wrong, Gloria. Well, I think I'm right. And I think that right now I'd just soon be in jail. Yeah. Really? No. Just right now. I mean, maybe we did get carried away here trying to fit misfits together. Misfits don't fit. No. No. It's stupid. It's just another dumb scheme that lands us all in jail. I mean, I did it again, didn't I? No, Billy, come on. He's the world's worst leader. That's it, Hayes. Time's up. I'm sorry, guys. All right, Strickland. We're coming out.
Let's sit down. But you're my friend. One of the family. You okay, B man? Oh yeah, I'll make it. All right, come on, let me help you. Why don't you do the honors, Al? Send it to the road. The world can see it. The misfits have done it. They've broken through. What are we doing? We gotta get upstairs. All right, come on, let's go. Well, of course, construction of the neutron beam will now be postponed indefinitely. I expect that'll make a lot of people very happy. Uh, excuse me, Senator, but there seems to be some activity on top of the Mesa right now. Oh, yes, yes, I see that. Well, I'm not sure what that is, but it does look like Dr. Strickland and, yes, General Theo. Susan comes up. Load it in. something coming out of the top of the mesa right now senator my god they built it built what senator the beam they've already built the beam Are you the gunnery officer? Yes, sir. You got a radio there? Yes, sir. Okay, that chopper up there, that is not to leave that mason. Go, 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 go. Shoot it down. Go, go, go. <laughs> sir, that's one of ours. I'm a U.S. senator, damn it. I said shoot it down. Yes, sir. Uh, Firebase Delta, Firebase Delta, this is Red Dog. Uh, Listen, you fellas have a little safer angle on this thing. We'll delay a couple of warning shots across that chopper's bow. Go, go, go! What do they think they're shooting at? Go, 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 go. Turn around, give me a shot at that mesa! Go, 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 go. Stupid goosers. I'll show them what a real weapon can do. Deal! No! Let's go! One, two, three, hit! 
you was no doubt. <laughs> You should have called me Ace. Hey, will you? Will you call me Billy? Good night, bunnies.